Alright, so today we're going to take a look at this force displacement graph, try to analyze it. As usual, you should pause the video and see if you can solve this problem first. So anyways, we have a 500 gram mass. Um, it's going to have a kind of a variable force applied to this over 4 meters. And we're just going to go ahead and analyze this. So remember, a force displacement graph, the way that you um, interpret this is that the area underneath the graph is going to be our work. So the first question is saying how much work is applied over 2 meters. So we're simply going to find the area underneath up to 2 meters here. Um, so the first region, uh, I like to make nice and simple shapes here. Um, you could use it make this a trapezo trapezoid. But let's just go ahead and say this is a triangle. So we have 1 half times base times height. So that's going to be 1 joule in this region. This is going to be 2 times 1. That's going to give me 2 joules. And then this region is going to get me 2 joules as well. Okay, so what I'm going to end up with is an overall work here of 5 joules total. So, you know, really there's not any complicated math here. You're just looking at the area underneath your, um, your curve here. All right, letter B, what's the final velocity over 2 meters? So this says we initially start from rest, which means our initial kinetic energy is going to be zero here. So we have a situation where we're starting with zero joules of energy. We're now going to have five joules of work applied, and that's going to then turn into a kinetic energy. So if we use, say, our E initial equals E final, the initial energy, you can say, is the work being added to the system here. And so the amount of work I have is going to all go into the kinetic energy. So if I started with 5 joules, that means I must end with 5 joules of kinetic. So we're just going to multiply this 1 half mass times velocity squared. Okay, the mass was 500 grams. Don't forget to convert that into kilograms. So it's going to be 1 half. I'm just going to write this as a 1 half kilogram times V squared. Okay, so that's going to give me, what, 20 equals V squared or V equals, let's go plug this in, square root 20 gives me about 4.5. All right, and that would be my speed. At this point right here, okay, we're going to be moving at about 4.5 meters per second. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. We're going to go from, um, the next question says, how much total work is applied over the entire four meters. So in this problem you can kind of solve this two ways. Um, the first thing we do want to do is look at the area of this. So notice we have a negative force here, which means the force is opposing the motion. So if we have uh, an object with a velocity moving this way, we're going to apply a force this way. So we're essentially doing work on this object. So this object's going to lose some of its energy. In other words, you know, obviously it's going to slow down. If you have an applied force this way, it's going to decelerate um, as it's moving that way. So anyway, the actual work here would be, well, 1 times 1, or negative 1. So that's going to give us a negative 1 joules just in this little region right here. Which means how much total work is applied over 4 meters. Well, we had 5 joules for the first two. Oh, I forgot about the 2 to 3. Notice there's no force at all here. So no work clearly in the 2 to 3. Then the 3 to 4 is going to give us negative 1. So the overall should be 5 minus 1 or 4 joules of work. So now if we're looking at the final velocity over 4 meters, again we could do our same thing. We'll say oh, E initial equals E final. And again if we start way back at the beginning, we had no energy to start with. So all this work is going to be turning into, again, kinetic energy. Or in this case, the total work is going to be less, 4 joules. So we'll do the same thing. We're going to have 1 half m, which is 1 half, times our v squared. OK, so 1 half and 1 half gives us 1 fourth times 4 is 16 v squared. And I don't need a calculator for this. We're going to get 4 meters per second. So you always want to make sure the answer makes conceptual sense. Notice after 2 meters, we'd accelerate it up to 4.5. Then we're going to have an opposing force in the opposite direction. That's going to slow us down to 4 meters per second. 